a good idea. I want to be like water. I want to be in the flow. I want to constantly be in the flow because it's so much easier, isn't it? So much more fun to go with the flow. I got to go back to this line here. Let's see if I can do it. I can't do it. Stop leaving me. Oh, we're getting there. Thank you. I went too far. Last, that's it, right there. I want to let, I'll let nature take its course. No more thinking that I know. That's a good one. I'll let nature take its course. No more thinking that I know where the river's meant to go. No more thinking that I know where my life is meant to go. I just want to be like water. I want to get in the stream of, of that infinite flow and let it take me and surprise me. You know, I think I want to, um, what's going on here? <laughs> I got to go with the flow. I don't know what's going on. My prayer was answered. I really don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> We're both clicking the buttons at the same time. <laughs> that last line. I want to go back to this. Because I'm coming down the mountains. I'm not heading uphill anymore when I'm going with the flow. That's an important thing because oftentimes we think we're, we're heading uphill. We're fighting against the flow. If it's not flowing, if it's not working out with grace and ease, then... Maybe I need to be doing something else. Maybe I need to be approaching it in a different way. Maybe I need to let go of some people in my life. Maybe, you know, I just need to go do something different. And the important thing about this is that it's not just giving up. It's, it's, we're going to learn today, it's a focused surrender. It's focusing our intention on a greater goal that requires an intuition. So we're not fighting against the ocean. We're not fighting against God. The waves don't fight against the ocean. If God is like the ocean, like God is in you as the ocean is in the wave. So we are actually part of something so much greater that we can't think that our little ideas, that our little um, desires have greater sway than the ocean itself. But we know when our desires, it's not that we shouldn't have them, but we know when they are in alignment with the rest of the ocean, everything's flowing. And you have all that power behind you now. You have all the power of the ocean flowing in your direction. Life happens, friends. It's, we have our ups, we have our downs, you know, we have our... Uh, really wonderful times when we do feel we're in the flow and we have those moments where we think, oh, this is a time of growth. You know, this is a time I'm learning something new. I, I've got to just stop and learn this lesson so that I can get back in the flow. So sometimes the lessons that we haven't learned are going to present themselves again in other ways. And when they show up, welcome them as well. I've learned to welcome those lessons as well. You know, I was fighting against my mom making her transition for, for years. She was telling us, I'm ready to go. And we were like, no, you can't. You know? But finally, it wasn't our choice. So I had to go with that flow. I had to accept something bigger is happening here. When people move out of our community to another community, something bigger is happening there. We're going to miss them. We're going to, you know, hold hold them in our hearts forever, but we are going to miss uh, your presence. When you're not here, we miss your presence. I miss your presence in my life, but I have to understand that you're still part of the same ocean, that we're still swimming in the ocean of God, and that your wave might need to splash upon another shore for, for a time, and that you're going to bless a lot of other people that I cannot reach. And so I look at you as part of me. You're, you're blessing those that I cannot um, get to or, or interact with. It's a wonderful idea. 
that we're all still connected, that we never are absent from the ocean of God, even though we may be riding a different wave sometimes. I'm so glad that you are surfing on the same ocean. I'm so glad that you're out there doing what you're doing. Whatever it is, if you're bringing more light and love to this place, thank you, because you're blessing my life. You're blessing those places in me that need to be blessed. So we have much to learn about navigating the ever-changing tides of life. We, we have a lot to learn as human beings. But one thing I've learned, it's much easier if you are going with the flow of infinite love. If we focus on the flow of spiritual energy and then we practice the divine laws, we're in the greater blessing. We're in the greater flow of infinite blessings. So Lao Tzu said something makes a lot of sense to me, that life is a series of natural, spontaneous changes. We, we often resist change, but he says, don't resist those changes. That only creates sorrow. Let reality be reality. Let things flow naturally forward in whatever way they like. And not only letting things flow forward, but flowing with them, for me, is very important. Going with the flow is a co-creative process. I like to think of it that way, rather than just a passive thing that I have um, no participation in. I think contrary to what most people believe, being in the flow is not a passive state where anything goes. It's active participation. You're acting with focus, with intention. And you're connected, and you're in communication with all there is, with that ultimate harmony of the universe. You're, you're in a connection with it. You're co-creating. We work in tandem partnership with the cosmic intelligence. That's an important thing to remember. We're not just allowing, oh, whatever happens. Uh, no, we're working, we're co-creating. We're working in tandem with this intelligence but with the cosmic or universal intelligence. And we manifest not only our desired outcome, but the desires of our heart. We, we manifest that which is deepest within our hearts. And so then we can trust that the universe is providing all the opportunities for us to manifest that greatest reality, what's deepest in our hearts. Quite often, it's a lot better than I could imagine. You know, in the song, the guy was saying, I didn't win the lottery, and you know, all these heartaches that I've uh, endured. That wasn't really what I wanted anyway. What I really wanted was to be like water, was to flow with the creative intelligence of the universe. I love that. I love that, that we're working in partnership. We're co-creators with the universe. So life's simple. This is a simple idea. And I just, I just want, you know, for me, um, it's important because there's been a lot of transitions in my life. Um, not just my mom making transition, but a lot of other people. Uh, she took a lot of folks with her. Even Ramdash. She, she said, come on, bro, let's go. <laughs> We're going the other side. Come on. Uh, just all kinds of people. And, and then, you know, folks moving out of town. Uh, you know, we're going to celebrate you today, Patricia and Bob, because they're going to go to bless this place down in Venice, Florida. And uh, You're not getting rid of us. We're going to come visit you. <laughs> She's got us on the calendar. Okay, everybody, I'm going to let you know right now. You, yeah, you have to make reservations at Patricia's. It's, it's gonna, it, yeah, she's going to put up a sign when there's vacancy and no vacancy. <laughs> uh, and, you know, you think you're going to miss those 20 text messages a day? No, you're still going to get them. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So it's simple because I can understand that life, everything is happening for me and not against me, not to me. It's, nothing's happening to me. It's happening for me. It's happening for my highest good. And the ultimate is when you can really experience that it's happening through you. I always say life's not happening to you. It's happening through you. You are con the conductor 
of the symphony of your life. And everything's happening at the exact right moment it's supposed to happen. Do you ever feel that way? When you're just in an incredible synchronicity? Yeah, because you're in the flow. Welcome to the flow. You know, um, it can be little simple things. You know, this week, uh, the handle was loose on the dishwasher. And I was like, oh, at first, you know, I'm, you know I'm, the fi- Mr. Fix-It's like, oh, no. That requires that little Allen wrench. It's about an inch and a half long. And it's down in the basement with 3,642 other tools. <laughs> And I have no idea if it's, I actually don't really know if it's down there or in the drunk junk drawer with 4,500, <laughs> tools. I had no idea. So I walked down in the basement and I, I opened the door and there's seven or eight or ten toolboxes. And the first one I pull out and the first drawer I open and the first thing I put my hand on is that little Allen wrench. What are the odds? 6,422 to 1. And, and what are the odds? I, I fixed the thing and then put it back, and that was it. Now, all of the other stuff that was going on in my head uh, would have definitely prevented me from finding that tool. If I logically thought, oh, man, I left that basement a mess. I'm never going to find that. No, it wasn't like that. I said, I have to find it right now, the first time. That was what was going on underneath the chatter, was the divine certainty that I know exactly where that is. Do you see? This is why you're sitting here today alive, because you went through a horrific uh, physical challenge and, and just the right people came at the right time. They brought you up to Boston. They did the operation. And she's back with us already. Yeah. It was amazing. And so this whole thing started with you. This welcome to the flow thing started with these two uh, here because uh, Karina was talking to us about her job. And she was saying the absolute perfect situation showed up with this person who I really like, uh, requested for me to work in her office. Not only that, that person who's going to be her boss is attending Unity now. (laughs) So they got a connection going. And who could have, like, dreamed up that perfect scenario except the one inside you who really knows? So the one inside you who really knows is connected to the one inside her that really knows. And the one inside her and him and him and him and her and him that really knows what needs to occur for our highest good. And that's the Holy Spirit within us that always knows everything. Everything for your highest good. I'm telling you all this because it says everything happens exactly at the right moment, whether you believe it or not. And you're capable of speeding up or accelerating that moment so that it's every moment. That's the exciting part for me, that it becomes every moment. It's neither too soon nor too late. It's just, you know, you don't have to like it. You don't, you don't, (laughs) you want to control the universe? Have fun. (laughs) Just keep going, keep trying to do that. It's just not a lot of fun for me. And it's just easier if you do like the idea that everything's happening at the right time, in the right place, with the right people doing the right thing. So this is a really cool guy that I discovered. I, always, I, I just absolutely love this process because spirit brings me to new people every week. And this is a, a not-so-well-known psychologist, uh, Mikali Sikzentimarhianahailai. <laughs> I don't know. How, does anybody know how to say that? Stand up, say it. Sheik sent me high. Sheik sent me high. Now, Mikali, how do you say his first name? <laughs> okay, I, I call him Mikali. Sheik sent me high. He's, he's from Croatia. He's from a, a, a part of the world that we don't normally look for to find these brilliant minds. He came out of Croatia, a brilliant mind, psychologist who wrote a book called 
the flow, the psychology of optimal experience. Now, according to Mikali, people are happy when they are in a state of flow. And he calls it a type of intrinsic motivation. So you're motivated by the spirit within. You're motivated by this internal intuition. That's your soul. And he says, flow is being completely involved in the activity for its own sake. Sounds like Buddhism, doesn't it? Sounds like mindfulness. It works no matter where you're from or what your tradition is. He's not partic- he wasn't particularly a religious traditionalist, but a psychologist. And he says the ego falls away when you're involved just with what you're involved with in that moment, fully with intention. Every time flies and every action, every movement, and every thought, that's very important, follows inevitably from the previous one, like playing jazz. Amazing. You're flowing. Now, what's amazing about music is that you're doing it, but it's taking you places while you're doing it. You have to be incredibly focused, right, Jack? You have to be incredibly focused in Ori. You have to have all of your being focused in what you're doing in that moment. And then there's a sublime thing that happens. You have to surrender. Like you give it everything and then you surrender. You surrender the result to the energy of, of, of the spirit, really, taking, taking that out to people. You know, Carlos Santana, you know Carlos Santana, the great guitarist. He says, when you're playing music, you're bringing light into the darkness. You are bringing harmony into the chaos. You're bringing something special to this moment because you're surrendering to a greater flow of energy, and it's coming through you. When you're doing that, you are bringing light into the darkness. And what I would say, whenever you're in the flow of any activity, whatever you're doing, you're bringing light into the darkness. Whenever you are just completely here, present now, completely involved, heart, mind, soul, sounds like a prayer, doesn't it? Sounds like love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and all your strength. And then what? Love your neighbor the same way. Love your neighbor as if that person is you. Isn't that incredible? And love yourself as someone that you are in love with, someone that you really love. Talk to yourself like somebody you like, at least. (laughs) When you notice yourself criticizing yourself in your mind or calling yourself names or that was stupid, oh, you idiot, you shouldn't have done that or whatever, stop. Say, no, I'm sorry. You're actually amazing and thank you. You're doing great. I love you. Love yourself. Talk to yourself like somebody you love. Watch everything change in that moment because you'll be in the flow with yourself. You'll be in the flow of your divine nature. What you're doing is acknowledging the truth because you are amazing. You are beautiful. You, You are the love of God in action. You are a representative of that divinity here on earth. And when you tell yourself and remind yourself those things, wow, your life changes. Now, this guy, uh, what was his name again, Kendra? Cheeks sent me high. Like cheeks sent cheeks, me high. Cheeks sent me high. <laughs> <laughs> cheeks sent me high. That, he's a, a, you got to read some of his stuff if you ever, if you ever um, find him on the internet. Just, just read some of his, he's an amazing mind, he's a beautiful guy, wrote uh, like four or five books about the flow, but one of his teachers was Carl Jung, and of course anybody in psychology knows Carl Jung. He said, he who looks outside dreams, he who looks inside awakens. That's the kind of psychology, I would go see him, <laughs> right? I would, I would hang out with him. So what he's... When he was thinking about um, this, this idea of the flow, he, he got some of his ideas from Carl Jung, who said, synchronicity is an ever-present reality for those who have eyes to see. 
Synchronicities happening all the time. Synchronicities. That means the universe is lining up for your highest good. The universe is conspiring to make your greatest dreams happen. It's, it's all lining up for you. And it, it's synchronistic because you're seeing the divine perfection in it. If I'm looking away from it, I'm not going to see it as an ever-present reality. I'll see it as, oh, it happens sometimes. But it's not an ever-present reality. The idea is that we look at it as that's the constant state. And I can become aware of what is a constant state. It's like abundance. It's not something we attain. It's actually a const- an awareness of that constant state of substance, of the universal substance all around us. I said last week that you're the richest person in the universe because you own it. You own the whole, the whole universe is yours, the whole thing. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with your universe? It's all up to you. It really is. It really is so fun and empowering when you think, wow, this is my life. This is my world, my universe. I'm going to do something amazing today. Just one day at a time. I'm going to do something amazing today. I'm going to get in the flow. I'm going to see with my soul. Because this synchronicity, you can see it from your intuitive mind. And all intuition is is seeing from the soul. As we see from our soul, we will see all things lining up for us in perfection each and every moment. You know right where to go, right what to say, and who to say it to. You know, you know exactly where that little tool is that you need. You know exactly where everything is because you have an intuitive capacity in your soul that you you don't activate in your conscious mind. Now, the whole idea is to bring the conscious mind in alignment with the soul, which is your subconscious. We said this last week, subconscious in service to what? The superconscious or the Christ mind. When the Christ mind is running the show, holy mackerel, things are unfolding just amazingly. And I'm seeing with the soul. And everything is in synchronicity. And that's faith. Faith can be considered the substance of those things hoped for. I really hope I found this tool downstairs when I go down there. I really hope that I open the right toolbox, that I don't have to look through 4,622 other tools before I find it. No, I found it. It was the first one. My hand just went right to it. Well, why don't we do that all the time? In every instance, with every thought, with every word, and with every deed. It's possible because it's possible when we have faith, when we see the substance of things that we hope for and the evidence of those things we don't normally see or that we can't see with these eyes. But we have a different vision, the vision of Christ. We talked a lot about that last week, the vision of Christ, right? And the vision of Christ is faith. It's the evidence of those things that we can't see with, those, uh, with our human eyes. Now here's something that I learned <laughs> from a very important spiritual teacher. This spiritual teacher came into my life about four years ago. She was sitting over here in the prayer chaplain corner, the first time we met, and she said a prayer for me that I would find the community that was perfect for me, that would welcome me in, it would accept the level of consciousness that I had to share with them, and it turned out to be you guys. <laughs> Something told Patricia <laughs> that I was going to be the minister here, even when I didn't think so. I was still going out and interviewing at other churches around the country. Something told Patricia to say that prayer for me, and it sparked something, planted a seed. (laughs) That maybe I should bloom where I'm planted. (laughs) And so this very 
important saying that she says, we all know that God's middle name is something. Something told me that I was supposed to be here today and share this with you. Something told me that that tool was in that spot in that toolbox downstairs. Something told me that you're going to have an amazing time in Florida. You're going to love your new home. And and you won't ever have to put up the no vacancy sign. (laughs) <laughs> and neither will you. <laughs> yeah, you can always come back and visit. Um, so something's telling me right now that, that we all know that we are in the right place at the right time with the right people, and we're doing the right thing. To those who flow as life flows, they need no other force. Whoa, how, how nice is that? I don't need another type of power. My power is the flow of the whole ocean behind me. I've got the universe. I've got universal mind, God, spirit behind me. I am on the wave of of the spirit of God, of the spirit of the unlimited. That's what is my flow. You don't need another force, my friend. Every other force you may try to invent, believe me, is going to go against the flow. We can join with this amazing way of living because it's a participation with the universe and it's a participation from a place of surrender and intuition. I'm surrendering to the flow and my intuitive mind shows me where to direct myself because if you don't know how to surf that wave, you might feel like you're drowning. But if, if you learn through your intuition how to surf this wave of powerful spiritual energy, it becomes easier and easier. And you are so in the flow, it almost scares you. Because everything's working out for your highest good all the time. You might even be tempted to create some conflicts just to make sure <laughs> I'm not dreaming. <laughs> But no, stay with it. Stay surrendered and in your intuition. The last thing I want to say about all of this is instead of going with the flow, the process is better described as being in the flow. The process is better described inevitably as being the flow itself because your consciousness and your heart and mind are actually guiding it, generating the power behind it and focusing your intention in the way it is going. So it's not merely riding the wave or surfing the wave. It is the wave. You are the wave. You are God in action. You're not the whole ocean, my friends. Don't get mistaken about that. But you have the whole ocean behind you. So welcome to the flow. I love you guys. You have been watching the message from our Sunday celebration service here at Unity on Cape Cod, providing a positive path for spiritual living. Please join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at 147 Walton Ave, Hyannis, Mass. And visit us online at www.unityoncapecod.org.